But it didn't start off as in just automatically hitting or pushing. Um, it started with verbal abuse, um, and that's where I lack. Um, I lack the, the the red flags that was there. So um, at the age of 16, it was just the verbal abuse. And once he felt that, realized that, that I had the fear of him, then that's when the domestic violence came about. Here I am with three children, you know, with this domestic violence, and I didn't know how to get out. When he slapped me for the first time and said that I couldn't leave out my own bedroom, then it was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe that just just happened. The dude that I love, and the person said he loves me, this has really taken place. And I held my son and I cried and I cried. He left out the room and he came back with a gun and he said, if you tell, then I'm gonna kill you and our son. And I was just like, Lord, I just got to get out of this. I got to get out of this. And again, I didn't know where to go. Everybody, my friends knew, and they'll ask me, why don't you just leave? But I kept saying, it's just not that easy. It's, it's, it's more scarier leaving and staying. Because I knew if I tried to leave, he would find me. He would find me because he was, he was actually stalking me at the same time. It was just a horrific, horrific um, experience as a young person as a young person not knowing where to go, where to get the help at. Many people don't make it out of this situation. And that's why I, my faith, I, even now, he, he called me maybe, maybe um, two months ago. And he said, I apologize. I apologize for what I did. And I know I mistreated you. And I told him, I said, I accept your apology. You're forgiven and I'm moving forward. And now he knows because I'm everywhere and I'm talking about it because I'm through it. I'm over and done. You have no control over me any longer. I'm bypass that. I will talk about it because the more I hold it in, it makes me feel like you still have control and you don't have that anymore. Being around other people and sharing, getting past the embarrassment first and being able to just talk about it. And then, like I said, even now crying, we realize that I overcome. You know, I have overcome. Just stay strong, just stay strong, and open your mouth and speak to someone. It doesn't matter who it is, if it's your child teacher, if it's your neighbor, open your mouth and speak. It is hope that out there there's help, and we want to help save lives. You, that, that's what it's all about. So, But you have to open your mouth. Don't be afraid. When there's an opportunity to do so, please take the opportunity to, to do so.